Hear the words of our Lord recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This passage from Luke's Gospel comes at the very end of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He has received the adulation of the crowds. And it is these same people that would demand His death on that following Friday. He comes to one of the mounts and he overlooks Jerusalem and weeps because he has spent three years preaching to them, teaching them the truth of God, doing miracles and all kinds of things that would say to people, listen, Learn, repent. And all of this, all of it, seems to be for no good purpose because they still, not, still did not know who he was because they refused to do so. The thoughts which these, I should say the questions which these thoughts in this passage from Luke's Gospel bring forcefully to my mind are these. Why could they not know or see that they had been visited by at the very least a man of God and at the very best God Himself? Why were they so blind as to what was obviously right in front of their faces? And actually I can only think of one glaring answer to these questions that they had set up idols in their hearts instead of God now we are all familiar of course with the scribes and the Pharisees the Sadducees wanting to kill Jesus because they saw him as a threat to their power their idol was that power which their position in the religious community held over the people and how they could enrich themselves through that power so that was their idol. However, the people didn't seek power. But they had just as many idols in their hearts instead of God as the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. They did not see what was before them either. Now, of course, the idols in their hearts are ones that I am unfortunately all too familiar with. Because I am subject to their follies just as they were. At times I have let lust, greed, pride, and all the other deadly sins cloud my vision so that I could only see what I wanted to see instead of what God wanted me to see. Did I know God's will and law? Oh, I certainly did. I certainly did. And I very pointedly chose to ignore it so that I could do what I wanted to do. Do my will, not His will. I was all too familiar with what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 2 from the epistle for today. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. I have learned very painfully that the idols which I chose to follow have led nowhere but to suffering, grief, sorrow, pain. I have learned many difficult lessons from the consequences of those actions as well. And I have the physical, mental, and spiritual scars to prove it. 
more than likely, you do as well. But I can only talk for myself. So now that we know that there are things which the world, the flesh, and the devil present to us that can keep us from hearing that still small voice that God tries to guide us with, why are we so deaf when we know better? I suggest that we need to search in our hearts for the idols that we have set up there. One of the things that I have recently discovered in my heart was fear. And I wish I could say that it, I was afraid of something that was important. But I cannot. The fears in my heart are minor and personal at best, frivolous at worst. And in reality, they are not worth the attention I give them. At the same time, I am aware of them. And I let them distract me at the most inopportune times, leading me to do stupid things. Do I know better? Oh, yeah. Sure. Do it anyway. Like I said, I know it. I just don't listen. And knowing this, I wonder why I still fall prey to them time after time after time. When this does happen, though, I can feel the tears of my Lord running down His face and onto my head. Just as He cried over Jerusalem. And what's really unfortunate is that for the same reason that He's crying then as He's crying now. I refuse to see what my Lord wanted me to see, to listen to His voice. He weeps for my sins, and I weep because I haven't, of having done them. I plead for Him to forgive me. And He does so, time after time after time. He lifts me out of the mud that I have fallen into, cleans me off, taps me on the head, says, keep going, John. And I do, for the most part. And this brings me to a point, the last point that I want to make for today, and it's indeed a difficult one to make. And it's the same point that our Lord makes when He says in Luke 19.46, saying unto them, it is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And of course, the obvious response to this is, that, well, 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 wait a minute now. We're, we're not selling temple money so that we can make offerings to God. We're, we're not selling special animals and making a, an exorbitant profit on them to, to sacrifice to God. We're not doing any of those things. That's true. We're not. However, just like the people of Jerusalem, we may have very well set up idols in our hearts, as to what we think God should look like rather than what He is. So in effect, we are stealing from God by withholding His worship and giving it to our idols instead of to Him. And this is all very well and good, but why is it important? Well, since we're supposed to be people of prayer, it's very important. He tells us that we are supposed to come to Him in all things. Offer to Him prayer. But what happens when we have idols? Well, God spoke to that when He spoke to the prophet. And His words are recorded in Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 2 to 5. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man... These men have set up their idols in their heart and put a stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man in the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, 
that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Idols. What idols do we have in our hearts that are interfering with our communion with God? What idols do we have in our hearts that are interfering with our prayers to God for those that we love? What idols are there that keep us from hearing that still small voice which says, this way? So if we desire the gifts of our Lord that are described in the epistle for today, and expect God to hear our prayers as we've asked for in the colic for today, and do not want to hear our Lord cry over us as He cried over Jerusalem, then we need to remove the idols from our hearts. And we need to do this before we come to God. Or He will take us in our idols, just as He took the people of Jerusalem in theirs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.